Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this episode of the Rising Heroes podcast. So today I have an amazing woman with me. She's a very senior friend, woman married with kids. Uh, she loves her family so much. Uh, she prepares us on Instagram with her husband's picture, especially on his birthday. And um, we're all, you know, like, ah, Jackie, my power, now. Jackie, don't kill us now. You know, that kind of thing. But uh, I got to meet I got to meet her some years ago. Interestingly, through the connection of uh, of another of another person, and she relocated to the United Kingdom to uh, with her family, and she's been doing amazing well. So today I've decided to bring her to the show because of what she does, which she's going to share with us uh, later on. We call her Jackie, as she has asked us to be calling her. Right. And it's also interesting to know that this woman paid me the first money I made from designing websites. So the very first person who believed that I could do a website for her and paid me for it. Right. So she I, I want to appreciate her for that. All right. So please make welcome uh, Mrs. Jacqueline Oludin, aka Jackie. So Jackie, nice to have you on here. Thank you for Thank you for joining us. I thank you for agreeing to do this with me. Um, how is the UK weather at the moment? Thank you for having me, Telushe Francis, and it's been a while. Thank you so much. It's so great to be on your platform. The weather is brilliant here. Very cold, <laughs> so it's brilliant. That's what it's meant to be in February. But we're looking forward to spring already, yeah. Hamatan. Hamatan is coming us here in, in Lagos. Hamatan you guys today. should enjoy it. You have no clue. You have no clue what, what winter looks like for us here. <laughs> so, uh, Jackie, can you tell the audience a little bit about you? Who is Jackie? What does she do? And how does she, does she find herself on this journey? Okay, so um, Jacqueline is some grace lady, <laughs> some lady who's been saved by, by grace, you know, and um, I'm married. I've got two children. Um, how did I find myself on this journey? Um, it was a very divine, you know, start for me. It wasn't something I started doing out of the blues or because I was bored or I wanted something to do. It was because I got stirred in my heart. I got leading in my heart to begin to speak about marriages, to begin to help singles get it right, to share from my experiences, um, to ensure that many singles and also young couples don't make the mistakes that I made and share my light with them, you know. So for me, it's much of a calling. And so um, that has led to, to the various... Um, dimensions of the work that I do. So I am a happy ever after advocate. So I practically speak on um, the marriage life and the fact that it should be successful. I am anti-divorce. I am anti-domestic violence in marriages. Um, and so you will see me speaking up for marriage, speaking up for happy ever after, you know, for such stories, because that's what it's meant to be. Um, but on the other side, also, I am the convener of the Saying I Do conference, the teaching conference um, for singles and marrieds. Um, also, the goal is to reduce domestic violence in marriage, divorce rate, and to save future marriages and build joyful homes. So I do that. And I also coach a lot of newlyweds, engaged couples, prepare them for marriage. I've got pre-marriage coaching packages and um, a whole lot. I also help a lot of singles heal from their heartbreak because I've had to do exactly that, you know, um, in the past. Um, I think that's how I met you, Tolu. <laughs> that was a story I wanted to share with the world um, when I first started, how I got healed from a broken engagement four months to the marriage, you know, to the marriage ceremony and how we had to call up the wedding plans. I had to return the engagement ring. And so I have written a book. It's on Amazon, um, How to Get Over, You Know, Your Ex. And, um, you know, yeah, so I do that as well, coaching and helping singles heal, you know, move on after a heartbreak. Um, and so many other things. I have a mentoring expression where I mentor singles, you know, prepare them for a marriage on purpose. And Marriage on Purpose happens to be my second book, um, which was published last week, last year. And it's also on Amazon helping, you know, um, people have the ideal marriage, a marriage that heaven applauds. I think that's about me in a nutshell. But on the other side, I'm a marketing professional and I live and work in London with my family. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Uh, uh, yes, I, I think we met on that platform of uh, trying to get a message across to the world and you've really been, you've been doing that and I'm following you up and I see the things that you pull out. So let's get down to business. Let's, let's dissect this matter. Valentine's Day comes every year. People have different mm -hmm. concepts about what love really is. People have different concepts about what relationship really is. I mean, a lot mm. of people think that because we're in a relationship, we should do this, we should do that. Mm. I was still sharing with someone recently that people in relationships sometimes just do all the mushy mushy and don't hold conversations that really matter. And then they get right. married and then they say that the person has changed or there was not the person they knew, whereas the person didn't change, but just because you didn't find out about certain things or you didn't try to find out mm. what this person does. So my, what I want us to discuss today, Jackie, is what matters yeah. most in a relationship yeah. what are those things that you think or what is that thing that you think matters in any relationship that two people involved should engage in or should discuss or should should have conversations about please share with us thank you tolu and you're right so many things um come to the table when you talk about this um particular issue but what else, what really matters you know is um very very vital um, I can I can give you a long list, really, um, but I think that I want to put it under one thing, and you, I hope that the audience will see this and also you know sit with me and hear the details. So for me, I would say that what really matters the most is maturity, um, and I say that from you know the basis of where I get all of what I do. There's a particular um, word that you know Jesus said, um, which is not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain attitude and grace. And um, he says marriage isn't for everyone. And so I, I always say to all my singles, my engaged couples when I'm coaching them, that it is not so much about how you're feeling in terms of the butterflies in your tummy. In fact, those don't even come to the table, in all fairness, you know, when we talk about a solid relationship. Um, it is so much more of um, your state of mind. It's so much more of having a state of being fully developed, um, a state of being able to make the right decisions at time. Um, I think for me that embodies everything else you want to talk about. I could say love, I could say compatibility, I could say vision, I could say all of that. But it's possible, I could say trust, you know, um, but it's possible that you, you, tr you know, someone can be trusted, but they are not matured enough to handle some other aspects, you know, other things. And so, but what you would find is if someone is matured, it means that they are able to understand not just themselves, but the other person. You see, so it's not even just about age, and I really must pause to say that, even though ideally, age should bring up, of course, come with experiences that should make you matured. Um, it doesn't really happen that way. So when I say maturity, please let's be clear that I do not mean age, okay? I mean physical growth. I mean emotional, mental, spiritual growth. You know, I mean mm -hmm. that you are able to understand yourself and understand other people. You know, um, you would realize that this is such a vital thing. It's such a vital thing. If you look at I mean, I can go on side stories, you know, from my faith, you know, background, but even beyond that, look at even the circular world, look at the corporate world. You hear things like emotional intelligence, do you see, because mm -hmm. you want to thrive, you want to do well, you know, and if you, if you want to take it back into relationship, you're just talking about maturity. You're talking about um, being able to take responsibility, being able to respond and not react, which is what we find in many relationships. People are just reacting. Sometimes they are reacting from a place of their past experiences. They are reacting from a place of their emotional imbalance and a whole lot. I mean, the list is long. But when I say maturity is what matters most in a relationship, I say it because two people from different backgrounds will come together. Major differences, background, education, finances, um, hopes, you know, dreams, also the list is long, you know, the spiritual differences, all sorts, but it would take a matured mind or it would take matured minds to sit together and be able to make something beautiful out of those differences. Do you see why maturity for me 
you know, will come as the first thing that matters most. So many things will happen in a marriage life. So you're married now, you'll agree with me that so many things come up every day. And sincerely, if you're not able to look at things with a bigger picture, with the eyes of a bigger picture, you're going to mess up the whole relationship, you know. And so for me, that's why it's very key. And so when I say maturity, I said, you know, things like taking responsibility, responding, not reacting, acting on your character, not emotions. You would see that if you begin to, if you follow me closely and begin to see, look at these things I'm saying, you will see that your relationship would actually thrive and you have a solid relationship if you can tick all of this. But all of this comes under being matured, under being solid, being strong enough you know, to be able to handle what happens, to be able to make excuses for other people, to be able to respond to issues, you know, wisely, to have a sense of empathy, which is what a lot of people don't have in the world we live in, to have a sense of empathy and realizing that no one is perfect, because that's a big issue right now in relationships. Always expecting the other person to be the ideal 100%, and that doesn't work. It doesn't work. So that's why maturity is very key. So realizing that no one ha is, you know, is perfect and no one has all the answers. Do you see? So maturity is actually a great need for anyone who wants to have a successful relationship. I will talk about a bit of my past relationships and that's just for, ju just to give you insight to bring a practical aspect to it. I look at past relationships I've had, maybe, um, maybe I I'll mention, let's just call him um, um, Tunde, so let's just say Tunde. I look at Tunde and the way he used to shout at me, and if I run late or I say I'm not coming, um, or I can't make it for a particular date, or I run late and get to the date, he's yelling, he's speaking to me, you know, in an unacceptable manner. Sometimes he even squashes my my wrist as a way to punish me physically. Do you see? I see a man who is not emotionally balanced. I see a man who is not emotionally matured you know, and many other things. I see a man who cannot behave or, or respond, but rather he's reacting to situations. I see a man who is not taking responsibility and who is not showing empathy. Do you see all of this coming under the umbrella of, of maturity? Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. an example. I look at um, another, let's see another example of, you know, an ex that I had who was cheating, even though he was in a very high, you know, um, leadership role. He was cheating and cheating. And that's why I wrote my book, you know, Seven, um, seven Ways to Get Over Your Ex, which, is, which, is, which you can find on Amazon. Um, he, he was cheating and cheating. And what's that example? He was just not mature enough to be decent. He wasn't also mature enough to be responsible for his actions, or also, you know, um, be who he was meant to be. And so I can go on and on, but you, you would see that if I say trust, it takes a matured mind to actually even be able to build a level of trust with someone, to actually show themselves as trustworthy, do you see? Because they have to take decisions and steps to prove to the other person that, you know, you can trust me. I've got your back, you know. I love you and I'm here to protect you and to, not to hurt you. Do you see what I mean? I'm not here to, to just use you. I'm not here to just take advantage of you. No, I'm here to love you all the way. It takes a matured mind because you have to take deliberate steps to show that. It's not going to be words of mouth. It's not going to be, oh, you can trust me. I love you. No, no, no. It's going to be the actions you take. And those actions come from a place of maturity, from a place of spiritual, physical, emotional, mental growth. Do you see? And so that's why, for me, maturity is the first and what I feel matters most. And I think that if Jesus actually said that not everyone is matured enough to live a married life, then it means that maturity is so key. <laughs> I don't think I have any other argument, you know. So the reason some, so many people never enjoy their relationship, and I'll tell you, is not because those people are not good. So people can be good. People can be kind. Some people may even be humble, and they are not just matured enough to go through that journey. The, the journey of um, dating to cutting or to being engaged, mm -hmm. you know, and to getting married, it takes a whole lot more than being humble. It takes a whole lot more than being in love juicy so you need a heart a readiness which is what i always talk about in my pre-marriage coaching you need a readiness and it's it goes round. so it's go around even in your finances go around in every other area of your life as much as possible whilst it will not be a perfect picture but there is this progress you know that you must see in a relationship or in a person if you know you're going to have you know a fantastic relationship okay so i wanted to say that i could have said love but there is a right way to love. Mm. And that comes with understanding yourself and understanding the other person. It is mm. possible to say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I never get that message. 
not so, because I'm not hearing you with my mm -hmm, ears, mm -hmm. but because you are not telling me I love you the way I, I, I understand love. So do you see? So it takes yeah. someone who sits down and says, oh, how does Tolu, you know, how would you rather want to be loved? How does Tolu, um, um, how, do, how, how can I communicate love to Tolu? Is it by helping him get this job done? Or is it by, you know, just sitting with him and, you know, spending time with him? You know, for instance, today's Valentine's Day and some people would go all out buying roses and cards and cakes and all of that. And all the other lady just, or the lady needs is maybe um, words of affirmation. You know, uh, maybe she's just looking out for a poem, you know, something that says you are the apple of my eyes. I'm mm -hmm. going to go all the way with you. La, 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 la. Do you see what I mean? All those sweet so, words. <laughs> yeah, you know, because there are some people, that's all they need. You know, mm -hmm. while some people may need um, time, they may just say, oh, let's go for a movie. And so that's mm -hmm. why you will see different expressions of love today. Some mm -hmm. people just say, oh, let's just hang out. Let's just have movies. Let's just um, um, popcorn. Let's just eat popcorn and ice cream. Or let's just um, have a dinner in a very quiet restaurant in a corner, you know. Um, so, but some people will say, oh, let's go party. You know, oh, Valentine's Fair, let's go and dance. So, you know, you need to just really understand, you know, that people interpret love differently. And it takes a matured mind. I'm going to take us back to that to say, okay, my way of understanding love is time, spending time with me. But Tolu's way of understanding love is getting gifts. Okay, mm -hmm. so as a matured person, I'm going to give her gifts, even though I know that I would rather have some time with her. So, but mm -hmm. let me satisfy her first. And then I'm sure that she'll also, if she's matured enough, to say, okay, I need to spend time with, you know, Jackie, mm -hmm. because Jackie would rather have, you know, me spend time with her than giving her gifts. I don't know if you see that, yeah, but it comes from a place of understanding yourself and the other person and being able to also prioritize the other person. It's only maturity that does that. It is maturity that would make someone, you know, see someone do something wrong to you and you turn the left eye, not because you cannot, you know, flip your, your sleeves and start punching, but it's the fact that you, are, you can do better. Do you see? Yeah. And so that's why it's so key for me. Okay. So... I have said that relationships, you know, would would fail or not thrive, not because the guys are not good or the babies are not good enough, but because, you know, they, they don't have a good level of maturity to carry, carry on and carry through. Some people will fight today because of what, you know, the, their spouse or their, their partner, their boyfriend or their girlfriend bought for them. Do you see? Mm -hmm. So rather than embrace the fact that somebody made efforts to, to do something special, some people will fight about the fact that it's not what they were expecting, mm -hmm. which is okay, but can be communicated on another, on another day. Sure. But the emotional intelligence to say, oh, I appreciate your thoughtfulness. Thank you for doing this for me. Da, 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 da. They will focus on the fact that this is shitty. This is crappy. You should have done better. Do you see what I mean? You yeah. don't choose your battles. And trust me, if you're going to have a great marriage, oh, you're going to learn to choose your battles. Mm -hmm. I learned that quickly in my first two years of marriage. You know? mm -hmm. And so that's it. So my friend too will help you seek to understand your partner. And so it's very key in relationships. It is what we call emotional intelligence disease. I think I've also said that. Yeah. And one of the things I also know that maturity will do for you, and I think that everyone should take it on, is that it helps, it helps it improves the ability to make good decisions um, with wise choices. And it, it, it comes with a place of stability. Do you see? So it yeah. comes with a place where to sit down and say, should we do this or should we do that? And you're going to be making decisions all your life. You make decisions for your spouse, for your children, where to live, and there are a lot of things that will come to play, you know. So just to give us perspective that one of the ways to say goodbye to rubbish relationships, to time-wasting relationships, is to look out for somebody who's got a matured mind, somebody who is self, who is selfless, mm -hmm. juicy. Um, a lot of time we're looking out for money, the guy with a great job, the babe with a great body, and all of that. Well, so all those things are good, and we probably would need them. Trust mm -hmm. me, they would not take you far. One mm -hmm. of the things that I, I remember that was my sermon, if I use that word, when I first started off, is what is your why? Why are you going into something? Why do you want to do this? You know, look at someone like Tolu. I know, I don't, I know when Tolu started, you know, um, all of this work with mental health and helping people and emotional stuff and everything. I know when he started. And um, I know that he's come this far because what was probably on the line for him or is on the line for him is not money. Yeah. Do you see? And so it will tell you how far someone will go. So the moment somebody comes into a relationship because, oh, the guy is rich. Oh, the guy's got a good job. He's got a good car. He's got a good house. We can, oh, I'm going to be comfortable. The moment that's the reason you're saying yes and you want to accept the proposal or whatever it is, you most likely will lose that yes 
when all of those things don't, are not there anymore. And trust me, life changes, situations happen, yeah. and it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. So, but the strength of your relationship a lot, a lot of time would also lie in in why you decided to date that person, why you are with, why you are with that person. Okay, mm. I, I hope we get wisdom from that. Um, yeah. What what comes to mind is is the lady, the story of a lady who you know, very beautiful, lovely skin, very very beautiful and successful. Um, two weeks to the wedding, hot water poured over this lady, light wow. skin, and her body was really, I mean, you, you know what hot water does to the mm-hmm, body. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, we can only pray that it doesn't happen to us. And so this lady, of course, she was in a bad shape. She healed quickly. Wedding could happen, but for some reason, the gentleman was having a rethink, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was having a rethink. And I said to myself, but the lady hasn't changed. Mm. This is the lady you fell in love with. You know, she's still who she is. She's still Jackie. She's still working in the bank. She's still, you know, nice. She's still homely. She can cook. And thank God she's not handicapped by this boy. just that she's got a scar. And so her face is in about two colors now. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm, and he mm-hmm. was having everything, you know. But that also will quickly point a very smart person to, why is this person trying to marry me? Or why was he going to marry me? Mm-hmm. Do you see? And of course, if you are smart at that point, you should even take a break. You shouldn't be in a hurry because something is wrong. The foundation is faulty, you know. So that's that. Um, just so that we can move on um, swiftly. Also, I want to mention, still on maturity, I want to highlight. I said it's important for me to highlight signs of maturity you should infuse into your relationship now or later. And you would agree with me when I list a day lot. I'll list a few, um, you know. And what comes to mind quickly is um, you will know a matured person by you know someone who doesn't make excuses over and over again, and also mm-hmm. somebody who doesn't blame it and blaming another person for what happens to them. You would know somebody who is matured by someone who takes more responsibilities for his or her actions or situations around them. Somebody who um, avoids nagging, complaining, whining, because that doesn't change anything. You know, and it's funny because we look at these things as little things, but these are the things that become big and great things in marriage. All of a sudden you say, oh, my wife nags, but maybe you should have paid attention to all of those whining when you were dating. Because it gives you a a little picture of what to expect on the bigger level when you get married. Do you see? So yeah. someone who is also matured, you know, will allow others to be who they are. One of the ways you would know somebody who is not matured is someone who tries to make you someone else. Who, who tries to who tries to make you who, who tries to make you um, you know someone else so that they can accept you. Then yeah, in fact that's a big red flag for me. And I always tell every every single I work with, every you know, person I work with to run away from such people because they're not accepting you for who you are and you cannot be a fake for a long time. You can try and be a fake for one, two, three, four, five years. If you're lucky, maybe ten years. You can't be a fake forever. I even doubt that you can be a fake for five years. You would show your true color, and that means that they are not in love with your true you you and that's going to be a problem um somebody who is mature will be fair to others and will treat others the way they want to be treated mm. do you see so if, if you have in a relationship where the person is asking to do some things that you do not want to do or that they wouldn't do then you know that there's something wrong okay to behave maturely is to behave appropriately appropriately remember that word and i also want to say that somebody who is matured would avoid biases you know would um, recognize and admit that they are wrong when they are wrong there's no perfect person if 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 you're with that person who cannot say sorry then they are not matured enough you know to admit that they are wrong and they are not even matured enough to put themselves a bit um on the on the next step to just let the other person be okay do you see what i mean um Another thing I also want to say, which is very important, I know very important to Tolu, is that um, if you're matured, you would recognize and accept your own feelings and your needs. Sincerely, it is one of the problems I think that a lot of young people have now. They don't even recognize what they're feeling. Like you can't, you can't identify what you're feeling. You can identify what you need. And you need to recognize it. You need to know how I'm feeling right now. Okay, I'm not feeling happy about the situation, you know, and you must be able to express that, that feeling. Okay, so to, to recognize and understand it, then you must know it, know that your feelings don't run the show. And that's, I think that happens a lot in many relationships, you know, where we are running the show with feelings. And that's why many relationships don't even thrive, you know, because all you're doing is talking, acting based on your feelings. But there's a whole lot more that you should be doing, you know, um, beyond just how you feel. So, for instance, you want to treat an issue. Let me let me just try and take that deeper. You want to maybe something has happened. You want to say, this is how I feel about it. 
not this is how I feel about you. Do you see? So he wants to be able to differentiate a situation. So even in my marriage, you know, we, if we have an issue to talk about, I don't say, oh, I think that you are selfish. Oh, I say, oh, I think that was a selfish act. Or maybe I think, do you understand? So you are not nailing the person to the cross. Um, you are talking about the issue that has happened. You must be able to separate the person from the issue. It takes a matured mind to do that, okay? Um, like I said, the list is very long. I could go on and on and on, but I believe that you understand clearly. And if you go and find out more what you know maturity means, it, it means also that somebody is able to make and keep long, long commitments, long-term commitments. It means that somebody is not shaken by flattery, by criticism, by social media, which is happening a whole lot. I see many young marriages going under pressure just because of what's happening on social media. It means that their mind is not strong enough, you know, so you're not not shaken by competition. You're not shaken by third party. If you're, if you're going to have a great relationship and marriage in the future, you must be matured enough to handle your situations and issues as much as possible, you know, by yourself without the influence of third party telling you which way or that way to go, because you must be able to make decisions, sound decisions for you, for your partner and for your children in the future. Um, so let me give you one or two, three ways to develop maturity, really, in all fairness. It is true interactions. It is true because it's, it's, there are not really things you want to read in, you know, or go to a class for. It is true your interactions with other people. It is true being reflective. You have to be a reflective person. I, I don't know if anyone can thrive and be successful in business, in anything at all, if they don't sit back daily, weekly to say, okay, how did we do? How can we do better? Um, and, you know, reflect on their life. Okay, and say, okay, so I shouldn't have done that. I should have been quiet. I shouldn't have talked when he was talking. I should have, do you see what I mean? If you're not reflective, I doubt how, how successful you can be. And so if you're a reflective person, by consciously now changing unacceptable behaviors, um, maturity enables couples to stick out. And I must say that, <laughs> to stick it out when the going gets tough. I think I, I, I highlighted that um, earlier on as well. So for me, Tolu, it would be maturity. Uh, marriage is not a crash, and I want to end on that. It's not a crash or a daycare. It is actually a place of work and responsibility. And you must begin to see that sign in your relationship now. If you, if you know you're going to have a successful marriage, you see. So that's why for me, my maturity is very important. If the guy or the lady doesn't have a teachable heart, it means that they are not mature enough to take on what somebody else wants to tell them. Um, and they, are not, they, they can't have a non-judgmental approach to things. Then we have a problem. We have a problem. Um, I, I think I'll stop there, Tolu. Have I helped? <laughs> I believe you have helped. You have helped quite a lot of people. And I mean, you've gone extensively discussing that particular issue, and I'm excited. But of course, I won't let you go without asking you questions. Now, these questions I'm going to ask you, they are all intertwined. Uh, one is okay. what exactly is love? What would you say love is? And I'm going to okay. match that up with how do I know that I'm in love and also that mm. someone loves me? You know, since we're talking mm. about since we're talking about relationships here and what matters. Uh, so let me ask mm -hmm. these two first of all together. What exactly is love? And then how do I know that I'm in love? And also how do I know that someone truly loves me? Okay. So how do I know that I'm in love? How do I know someone truly loves me? What exactly is love? Okay, so for me, and um, I think that this is something I'm also teaching heavily now, love is beyond words love is beyond saying you know yesterday i was having a joke with someone on this on facebook who was saying that you know people should give to their spouses money gifts and all of that because love is not just uh, you know about saying i love you and i said actually because love is a verb love is actually an action word you know so love actually does you know it doesn't just say <laughs> You know, whilst that may be funny, the truth of the matter is that that is what love is. Love is an action word. Love is something you do in response to understanding value. Okay? Love is something you do in response to understanding value. And in this case, value of that person, value of a relationship, value of a marriage. Okay? So it's a decision. It's a choice to be a source of joy. And I hope that singles who are, who are you know, listening in, even married, will take it on. So it's a choice to be a source of joy to another is, is, a, is, a, is a choice to serve another, is a choice to show compassion, it's a choice to, to, to show another what it means to actually truly, um, you know, love. And when I say love, I want to use the word what it really means to, to know God, 
okay, and to experience God. And permit me, because I'm um, telling you, my, 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 all I do comes really from my faith. And um, in fact, I'm going to be quoting um, a certain place also in the Bible that talks about love clearly, and it gives us the qualities of love. How do you know you are in love? This is the way I teach my um, engaged couples and singles. And I think to you, your audience are lucky today because they're getting this all for free. But the litmus test that I always give all my couples is I say to them, take all the qualities of love as you can find, you know, in the holy book and um, put your name beside it. So where you have love is kind, put your name, Tolu is kind. Don't be in a hurry to go to the other bit. Ask yourself, am I kind? What does kind mean? Do you see? So for instance, and I know that we, we always, um, we're in a hurry, to, we, we, we're very familiar, we try to act familiar with words, permit me. Um, so for instance, where it says love is patient, what does patience actually mean? Patience actually means to be able to go through something, whether a delay or a problem, and um, acting calmly. Um, to be able to go through a problem, um, you know, um, a delay, um, a, a challenge, whatever it is, without being anxious or annoyed. That is actually the full definition of patience. So I hope you, you have not lost me here. Because then it means that if you say that you love me, then you are going to be patient with me Mm -hmm. So much so that even whilst I'm still trying to get my feet on, you know, on the ground or in a particular area or in, on a particular issue, you are not losing your temper with me. You are mm -hmm. not getting angry. I mean, that's a dictionary definition. So that's not like a Jacqueline's, um, you know, patience definition. No, that's a dictionary definition for patience. So if you say you love me, I must see that love in the way you deal with me patiently. Mm. <laughs> do you see that yeah so um if you want to run a litmus test on whether someone loves you or you are in love sit down and think how much risk am i willing to, to take for this person mm. how much mm. am i willing to give for this person how much am i willing to let go for this person yeah. sincerely speaking if you cannot um check yourself on that area i don't think i know anywhere else to check so if you go through all of the qualities of love as found in the holy book, it's a long list. It's not rude. It's, um, it's not boastful. It's not jealous. Um, it's hopeful. And I'll give an example of what does it mean when you say love is hopeful. Love is hopeful because it doesn't give up on you. It doesn't, um, it, it, thinks, it thinks the best of you. So even whilst you're showing off some negative or some things that are not right, love believes the better of you that it would, you will be better. Mm -hmm. So you don't give up. It don't shut the door on you. Do you see? So you want to check that someone loves you. It's not by the gift. It's not by the text messages. Believe me, these are the ways to check. And that's why singles, before you get married, be able to tick this as your checklist, not the other things that we like to, to tick. Because a man can work at the NNPC today or work at um, Virgin Atlantic tomorrow as a mm -hmm. CEO, and tomorrow he's no longer there. Sure. Tomorrow a lady can have all, all, all that fine you know size six body and tomorrow she's got two babies and she can't get it back so we mm. need to understand what love truly means so that when we eventually get that relationship get married that is what will continue to groom the garden of your relationship that true love so i think i've answered what love is how yes. to know you know what you know um if someone loves you and if you love someone <laughs> thank you thank you now two more questions if i let you go Okay. What are the questions to ask before saying, no, 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 if I ask that one, any difference between dating and cutting? Some believe that um, there's a difference between dating, some believe that there's a difference between cutting, some who are Christian folks say that Christians don't date, Christians only cut. I don't know why some feels like they are the same, but I want to hear from you, what's the difference between dating and cutting, if there is any difference? Yeah. Sincerely, you know, I, <laughs> I, I let, let me just tell you the way I, I, I would differentiate mm -hmm. both. Okay? okay, so when it comes to dating, it is possible for you to date someone and not have marriage in mind. Do you oh, see? Mm -hmm. So for me, and that's the way I train my singles, that, you know, you must be able to tell when you have moved from dating to courtship. Oh, I believe that courtship always has the intention to marry. Not every mm -hmm. date has intention to marry. So that's where we must get wisdom. So while someone is saying, oh, this is the babe I'm dating, which is fine, or this is the guy I'm dating, you, you must begin to tell yourself how long you want to be on dating level to say, oh, this is the babe I'm cutting. When you say you're cutting, you're actually cutting in preparation for marriage. That's mm -hmm. actually the time where you begin to really affirm this person's suitability for you. 
You know, one of the things that dating does is that it, it really can help you keep on a camouflage on for a long time because you're dating, you know, so there's really nothing at stake. Um, but the moment you're able to transit to that, I, I call courtship the more serious and intentional level. Okay. Mm. Um, and, and so for me, that's how I demarcate it. And I hope that has helped someone. So it is that time, the courtship for me is that time where you begin to affirm the suitability of a person, where you begin to see each other every time for the purpose of proper scrutiny. Okay? okay, to be able to tell that this person, okay, yes, we, I want to go on to marriage with this person. Okay, okay. Um, so that's how I differentiate it. Yeah. Oh, great. Thanks. Now, on the final question, and I know that this is more at home with you before because you talk more uh, about this and you have listened to you several times, and that is. Uh, What are, the, what are the questions to ask as a lady before saying yes I do? As a lady, mm. as a lady. Okay, so because you said as a lady, um, let me say something for both ladies and men. Okay, and Tolu, again, I can't pull myself away from my faith, and I must say I know that everyone here either wants to go to heaven or the other side. So at least let's say that. So one of the, one major thing I teach my singles now, particularly because of the world we live in. Um, I mean, you can tell these this sad stories are everywhere, Tolu. And so I'm, I'm, I'm burdened to make sure that people know the right thing, not just those surface things that we teach or that used to be taught, like, you know, back in the days. Oh, you must love the person. Oh, you must speak well, which are great things. And I will talk about them. But I think for me, the major thing um, before you say I do is ensure that this person is heaven focused. So this person lives their life not as if F is the final destination. I believe this will make some meaning to everyone in your audience, Tolu, that this person is heaven focused. The moment somebody lives their life like it is beyond them, they will do better. Okay. The moment someone lives their life like, oh, I call the shot, it's all about me, I don't care how you feel, they would not treat you right. And that's the truth. That's just the truth. So that for me is like a, a summary of all you should look out for. Because once someone is heaven focused, they know they want to go there. They don't want to miss out. Everything they do would be in line with that. And that includes the way they treat you in a relationship or in a marriage. So before you say I do, you want to make sure. Because also, you know, people will say, oh, I want a God-fearing person. God-fearing does not mean God-loving. And because God-loving means you obey. You do what he wants. Okay, so... For me, that's like the baseline. But of course, mm. there are many things. I, at some point, I was writing a book on, you know, 100 questions to, to ask before you say I do, but I just put it aside, you know, when other things came up. And I broke them down into different um, segments. And I think you guys are going to have an expo today. I think, first off, you guys should follow me on Instagram at Jackie Talks. It's very important. But also on my, you know, my website, I've got a list. And I think I'm going to have this ebook come out now that you're taking me there again. But let me say a few things. Before you say I do, please ask questions about marriage mindset about the mm. big picture the person has for marriage you see don't mm. just say oh we want to get married oh he wants to get married that's fine what is the mindset he has for marriage is it one that can break up in two weeks is it one that they just walk out of it if something goes wrong do you see mm -hmm. what is their marriage mindset what does marriage mean to you actually does it just mean something we do because i have a job i'm old enough i have the money so let's get married that's the next thing i have somebody who got married and um, who said i must get married by 30 i've got my job i've got a fantastic you know job a house and i want to get married at 30. so Lou, believe you me his his wife has moved out of the house now with, her, with their son and that's wow. simply because he got married for the wrong reason you know wow. the, so the mindset is important so when you get married you get married because you want to be with someone for the rest of your life you want to raise your own home your own sane home you know not just another home that can break up in two days or in two weeks or in two years so you know ask questions about the marriage mindset i have 15 questions on that marriage mindset wow. i can't say all of that here um, ask questions about emotional health and well-being. So, look, people don't talk about this. People mm, don't talk okay. about this. We think, we think that marriage is a joke. It's not a joke. Whilst it doesn't mean that you would run away from someone with a, maybe an emotional health issue, and totally you'd agree that emotional health is not a problem. It's not a stigma, so to say. Mm, it is mm. something that people get well. They get well from it. So, you know, but the point is ask. Know what you're getting into. Don't get into it and see that the person's bipolar. Come on. Mm. Bipolar is going to affect some things in your marriage. Do you see? Um, 
and when I talk about health as well, our churches will say, go and do, what do you call it, HIV test. HIV test, test and all that. There's another one. But there are other ones they don't tell you to do. I know a couple that it was after they got married, they realized that one of them were infected with um, hepatitis um, A or B, I don't know, the one that is infectious, you know. And then there was an issue when they're going to have children because they had to protect the babies in the womb. Story for another day. But that's just to give you insight. Like I said, so I think your guys should pay you for this particular podcast. <laughs> I have about 20 questions on that emotional health and well-being. Um, mm. Another um, area I think you should be asking questions is about sex. So talk mm. about your sexual experiences in the past. Please, talk about it. And if you have not had any fantastic, then talk about what you know and what you expect of it. And then if possible, get people to answer your questions for you. Don't wait until you're there. Some people just break up because of sex issues already in the first you know, six months of marriage. You know, So um, you should ask questions about finances. You should talk about communication. You should mm. talk about their background. Some okay. people grew up in a family where the father shouts at the mother. And that's the way they live. There's nothing wrong with them. They're together till today, but it's just the way they live. Yeah. You may not be able to take it tomorrow. I talk with a lot of um, high tempo because I grew up in a home where we used to have to shout out. My father's house is actually very big. The house in Yanopaja, very, very massive. It's got, it's a duplex. It's got like six rooms. There's a, you know, the living room downstairs is in like three different partitions. I'm giving you, I'm saying that's good perspective. So when my mom is calling out, she's shouting, Jacqueline, you know, so I'm saying, yes, mommy, you know, <laughs> and you would be surprised that I carried on that high tempo, even till now sometimes. Except when I want to consciously control myself, you know, and, or of course, when passion takes over me, like when I'm talking about marriage, you can't even help it. You probably see all of you see me in my element, you know. But the point is, I grew up with that kind of mindset. When my father would shout from the balcony and say, where are you? Can you get me my son? Da, 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 you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. For some people, their father would never shout. You would just hear, oh, Jacqueline, can you get me my pair of glasses? Do you see what I mean? And so you need to understand where people are coming from so that when they... You, I'll give you a good example as a way to round up. Mm -hmm. um, my husband, um, the first night he spent after we got married with us, with my family, um, it was, uh, I think it was New Year. So we spent Christmas at his family and then New Year at my family. That's before we moved to the UK. Anyway, that doesn't happen anymore. Um, but that night, he said, when we go into the room, I go into my room and we're going to sleep. He said, I'm so scared. You guys just arguing on top of your voices. We were just chatting. We were just, you know, yabbing each other talking about some things in the past but you know the way we're all talking over each other's voice he was like i was so scared i said yeah honey that's how we roll here sorry you know but the point is just that difference alone can ruin a marriage it can ruin the way both of you talk to each other or relate to each other because they're wondering it's okay <laughs> you know is there a problem and if you never understood that that's just how it is he would say oh she's rude oh she's um consenting do you see what i mean okay so just to give you perspective so i also um want you to ask questions about finances oh please are you bringing a, a depth a heavy depth into this marriage um are you a spender are you a saver i mean the questions are there are many um you also want to find talk about their you know their family members um uh, and all of that you want to ask questions about even your spiritual um future what are we going to be doing i mean i know i know somebody who was going to get married to an anglican and she was catholic and I, it was serious work for me because she kept on saying oh no i'm not i'm not going to be an anglican i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be an anglican i'm not going to go to an anglican church when we get married i'll go to catholic and he will go to um, um anglican on sunday and i said so when the kids come what's gonna happen oh i'm gonna take the okay so I was talking about the lady who who's Catholic, grew up in a Catholic family and wanted to get married um, um, to an Anglican guy. And she was very adamant saying, it's fine. I mean, we'll get married, but I'm never going to go to to um, uh, an Anglican church. I'm going to go to my Catholic church. So on Sunday, we'll just say goodbye to each other and go to our different churches. And I said, okay, that's fine. And as a coach, you try, you don't you force anyone, you ask questions. I said, so what's going to happen when the kids come? And she was very fast to say, oh, I'm going to take my kids to my Catholic church. They're not going to go to Anglican. I said, your kids. And she goes, well, yeah, there are kids. And I'm like, okay, so, you know. So the point is, you, you don't wait until you get married. Those are the kind of conversations you want to have. You don't assume that because it is, um, it, 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 it's what you like, that's what he's going to like. So I also said, you know, there are many questions on that spiritual 
um, you know, future. If you ask me, I have like 15 questions here. Um, sometimes it's even the way you pray, how we pray when we pray, <laughs> you know, you'll be surprised how many things come to play. I had a bit of a, a firebrand kind of background when it comes to prayers. And uh, my husband, even though he can be very firebrand, his firebrand did not equ equate to shouting and stamping your feet and snapping your fingers. Do you see? <laughs> And so when you want to pray with someone like that, you know, and you're married all your life, you know, you have to think of future. You're thinking long term. You, 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 so well, that's why you must ask these questions. You must talk about them, reach a middle ground. It doesn't mean that you have to be like that person. It just means that you have to reach a middle ground. So there are many questions that could go on and on. I said, talk about um, your finances, who's paying the bills, um, talk about as much as possible, as many things as possible. Okay, that them. has been that as this has been very very explosive. I must say you Thank have you. done so much justice to this topic. Now, how can people find you? Um, social media. Where can they find? How can they find you? Your books. Where are they? Can you just share with us? Okay. Thank you, Tolu. Thank you so much. So they can find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Jackie Talk. So that's J A C K I E. T A L K S, just like I'm talking with the S at the end. Jackie talks, and on Facebook is Jackie Noludimu. Um, you can I've got a website, a very active one now, um, and I've got coaching programs on it. So that's www.jackietalks, the same jackietalks.com. I'm on Twitter as well as Jackie Talks with a Z at the end for Twitter anyway. For yeah, um, but that's where you can find me. You can send me a DM. You can you know reach out if you need coaching or help. If you want me to groom you um, for your marriage, if you're engaged, and some people are going to get engaged today. So yes, please come on. <laughs> and my books are on Amazon. You know, um, the first book was Move On to Lou. I think Tolu was a very key, a very key um, um, person in getting that job done for me. Thank you so much. I can never forget. Um, um, move on, it's on Amazon, and also Marriage on Purpose is on Amazon. If you just type Jackie Nolu Demo and type Move On, it will come up, or Jackie Nolu Demo Marriage on, um, uh, Marriage on Purpose, it will come up as well. And they're there, they, you can also get them on my website anyway if you live in Nigeria. And if you don't live in Nigeria, it's on Amazon. Thank you so Hello. much, thank you so thank much, you. thank you for for coming on board. So that's it, everyone. Thank you for listening. You got our contact details. I hope that the things that you have listened to today will help your marriage, will help your relationship, first of all, and then translate into giving you that kind of marriage that you dreamt of. I'll see you in the next episode. Do not forget to go practice what you have learned, all right, so you can rise above where you are at the moment. Thank you.